Welcome to Potentials. This is Lija, and I have Jared Murphy once again on uh, Potentials, and he's potentially fantastic. <laughs> no, <laughs> he's definitely fantastic. So, Jared, what what would you like to share with us today? I know um, you have thoughts and ideas. Yeah, so I was thinking we'd flip the script a little bit, and I'd interview you. Okay. All right. That sounds like fun. Right. <laughs> I'm up so for I, that. I have a couple just random silly things at first, right? So I've been stuck on, you were talking about swimming with manatees recently, right? Yes. So just, can you tell that story? That's amazing to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I, it's not really a story. I just went to the beach and um, I just, went into the water and there they were. It was just amazing. I, I was not expecting to see them, <laughs> but there, it was a couple. It was a little manatee couple and they were like kissing. It was the most adorable thing. Like they were going, they were submerging and then coming up and kissing, like as if to say, we're a couple, hey, you know, PDA. That's <laughs> cool. It was adorable. And then they would just go under again. And of course people started seeing them and you know, getting all excited and taking video of it. And um, and then they started going away from everyone, but it, they were amazing. They're huge. They're enormous, but they're are gentle they, plants. So. Like how how big are they, you think? Oh, man. I've never seen one. I'm in probably, Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah, they're probably the size of my car, you know, like the length yeah. of the car. Not like as big, you know, but right. like the length of a car. And... uh maybe around big as around maybe as big around as a dolphin maybe maybe a little fatter well, like a fat dolphin <laughs> <laughs> that's a band name <laughs> <laughs> so uh do you have like a strong connection with animals like do you just have uh this is a random question i just thought of but like if you're just going about your day. Will you have stray cats and stray dogs walk up to you? <laughs> this is, I'm just starting with random stuff. Yes. yes. Um, okay. And uh, squirrels seem to like me that randomly and lizards and, oh uh, yeah, insects, dragonflies. Um, Why yeah. funny you Butterf say that. Butterflies, butterflies too. I get a lot of butterflies that come around me. Um, yeah, so. That definitely, but I I feel like they see that I see them, so maybe that's yeah. what it. Yeah. All right, so now I want to jump in here with some. So I, this is one you've asked me before. If if you were to get in a time machine and go back five years, and someone were to ask you where you see yourself in five years, are you on track, or do you are there adjustments you need to make? Like, where are you at? I, I'm, I'm, I just know I'm where I'm supposed to be. I never know where I'm going to be. You know, yeah. I, I never have any definite plans. Like I don't have a five-year plan. I don't do that because my life has always been swinging from vine to vine, you know, and uh, I've moved a lot. I've traveled a lot. I don't really sit still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I've been here longer than I've been. Um, I mean, yeah, I was in Pennsylvania for a very long time, but I I love being in Florida. But I mean, it's not something that I, if something were to happen and I had to leave and go somewhere else, I could do that. And if yeah, I yeah. if I needed to travel, I would travel. If um, suddenly I was told you have to go to Antarctica, I would go to Antarctica. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's. That's all Mars, I not Mars, Jupiter, I don't know. Some I would go wherever. I, That's you know, all wherever I'm told to go, I would go. Yeah, there's a, a movie that makes me think of it's called Up in the Air with George Clooney. Oh, I've never what, seen Okay, well his his character, okay. one of his main shticks or like his thing is the backpack and it was this whole thing about everything in your life needs to fit in a backpack. All your emotions, <laughs> all of your baggage, all of your physical items you, you know right. basically you need to be able to cut ties with physical things and 
and be able to move if you need to move. I think that's a, I think that's pretty cool. Right. Well, that being said, I do have a lot of things in storage in Pennsylvania, but, <laughs> <laughs> but that's yeah, I mean, if, if I had to just pick up and leave, I would do it because it's not about what, your material things they they come and go it's really about what you have inside of you you know yeah. so that that's gonna stay where or go wherever it needs to go i'm pretty sure i've almost to a t heard the dami the dalai lama say what you just said maybe in a oh. passage for a monk <laughs> <laughs> maybe so i like uh, the idea of the tardis where you're bigger on the inside than you are on the outside yeah we're all we're all a TARDIS from Doctor Who yeah, yeah. Well, I'm a lot of these questions I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie they're uh mainly P. Hall influenced so but he uh right. he talks about about that too like we are each a universe right god dang it my mom and her husband watching football in the other room so sorry <laughs> they're screaming they're <laughs> uh, but like we are we are each a universe so like which makes sense to me. I mean, there's all kinds of living things in your body, you know, and you provide that environment for them. Uh, so like whatever you're putting in your body and I'm not a saint. I don't, I don't always eat the healthiest and I'm, you know, I'll make the best decisions sometimes, but if you, I just think that's a smart way to look at things. I agree with that. Yeah. It's we we have a little universe inside of us. Well, not a little, we have a huge universe inside of us. Right. right? So right. you're putting things into the environment of your universe. Every time you ingest something that makes, that's really cool. I like that. Yeah. And emotionally, I think as well, like, yeah. Energy. Know, yeah, like days yeah. when you wake up just stressed and you don't know why, uh, I forget the, the name of this thing. It's something funny as hell, but, uh, a lot of ancient people believe that basically we were a part of the universe was a living thing, right? Uh, which makes sense to me, but uh, it's the same thing. You wake up and you're like, why am I in a bad mood today? Well, there's living things on the inside of you that might be thinking the same exact thing. <laughs> yeah. Or there's a war going on inside. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like Star Wars oh. is happening inside of you. <laughs> I never thought of that. Yeah, that's huge. <laughs> All right. So. I'm going to start in here since since we can assume that nature is perfect, right? All the living things uh, are created to somehow benefit the betterment of nature. What would you say that your true purpose is like? What's your soul's mission for this reality? Or do you know yet? Um, yes and no. I mean, I feel like in the moment. My current purpose i feel like it can change maybe yeah um but my current purpose is to help this transformation that's going on right now yeah to help accelerate it and help magnify it make it but you know make it better make everything make everything better i mean i feel like that maybe is my purpose is just to make everything better <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. So <laughs> in in I, I keep running into these people that are kind of on the same. There's a lot more of us than I would have thought that are on the same kind of trajectory. Um, yeah. And. Uh, oh, my gosh, my mom. Um, so. I, I lost my thought on that because of them screaming in the other room. So um, anyway, I'll move on to the next. A lot question. of us are on the same trajectory is what. Yeah. Yeah. OK. OK. So, but I keep hearing people talk about upgrading consciousness, but those are just words to me. I don't really know what they're talking about. And I'm not saying I have the answers. I don't know either. Um, but what's your take on that? You know, you keep hearing people talk about, oh, well, we're going to upgrade consciousness. Well, what does that mean? Um, yeah, that I, I've never heard the term upgrade like that actual term, but I kind of feel like what they're just saying is that we're our consciousness collectively is at a certain level and we're trying to make it raise it to a higher level where we see more dimensions than the one that we're in. You know, so, like 
we're okay. like we see everything in 3D right now and there's more dimension to our world in this because it's it's growing into and it's it's going through transition where it's go, it's going to be into in a higher dimension is yeah. what i understand is what i'm hearing is what's happening and i'm feeling it i'm seeing it glitches yeah. are happening weird things are occurring strange things so i feel like when transformations occur that you start to see the results of that happening and it's and, and it you start to feel it and um i just recently saw a video where it shows what 4d looks like um by using a sphere and and yeah. how it it looks like it's getting larger like the sphere actually looks like it's growing but that's because it's just another dimension so um, whenever people say that because this always sounded like some bullshit to me when people say the universe is expanding maybe that's exactly what's happening maybe yeah it's just... i mean that, yeah it's okay. it's expanding is a hard word yeah to explain <laughs> yeah i agree <laughs> it's so Cause... hard when we get tripped up with words because words are so limiting you know yeah. the language the man... is so limiting yeah it's a roadblock for sure yeah um so that's why i like pictures better i like images yeah and um i like telepathy and feelings Art. and that's intuition I, yeah. yeah you know what's really throwing me what's really distracting me right now but it's in a good way uh, you have and we both have because we're in the south we have uh you know fans above our heads but yeah, yours yeah. is directly above your hat right now and it looks like oh my you have gosh glowing aura I, and yeah. like it looks like the like these like waves of light are coming but pulsing out of the top of your hat. <laughs> it's yeah. amazing. I'm not high, I swear. I just this is how I am. <laughs> no, it's cool. You don't have to stop it. No, no, no. I like it. I like it. <laughs> um so, sorry. No, you're good. That's awesome. So um unfortunately, if you and I think we've we've talked about this before like whatever the singularity you know whatever that word means it's like in my mind that means we're getting closer to the bottom of a funnel right uh if our reality is spiraling downward right we're getting closer to that bottom point and things are getting closer and closer That's together right yeah uh and i think we've talked about this which speaks to really all of our experience all of humankind's experience is gonna it's can be represented by a dot you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. potentially there are beings who can access that like a file in a computer mm -hmm. um so as we get closer and closer down to that singularity event whatever you want to call it how do, i'm going to ask a big question how do you feel about ai <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a tough question um yeah i've had fluctuating feelings towards yeah. ai I, it, it's it's good and bad it's just to me it's like a it's a tool that could yeah. be used for good and evil you know just like anything table so, saw just Hammer. Yeah, yes it just it just depending on music even like it can be used for good or evil um yeah. you know so it's it's just how whatever you want to do with it right yeah and I as far as controlling it and, you know, because that's what people really are afraid of, really, with yeah. people were afraid of computers before they happened. You know, people were afraid of whatever new, new thing it was. They People have always been afraid of something new and afraid of change. And that's I'm a good not point. afraid of change. I like to foresee things. I like to look into the future and, and feel something about it. But um, I think that change is always good. and it, it's something that we need to do but uh as far as like making sure that you what your intent that's really what it's about it's a it's about intent where that's magic word do it. yeah right um so i just i don't know i live personally i live under a rock like i have no idea what's going on in the world and when i do check in it seems like people are just getting more and more worried about ai uh yeah. you know and i just don't know how to feel about it but that 
I like that answer. I think it is a tool. I think, I think uh, it can be whatever you want it to be. It can run your life if you want it to, or we can yeah. be coexisting like the damn Jetsons. <laughs> exactly. Well, and I, as far as what it's going to do in the future, there's so many different timelines that, you know, it, ways it can go one way or another. And I feel like you choose your timeline. Every Everybody chooses their own timeline. So whichever one you want to live on, pick that one. <laughs> like, that reminds me of the choose, those choose your own adventure books. Do you remember those? Yes. <laughs> That's what that reminds me of. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so, okay, I got some kind of nerdy Harry Potter-esque stuff. <laughs> so, and uh, I talk about this all the time, you already know, but like in the esoteric Buddhist philosophy, the soul is split into seven parts right which makes me think of the seven horcruxes in harry potter yeah uh so the fourth principle is the spirit animal right so that's the last one before you kind of get into uh less physical concepts i think I, i'm i'm spouting this the best i can understand it i'm not saying i have a super good grasp on it but if you were to if you were to name a spirit animal for yourself what would you be Oh man. <laughs> I love so many different types of animals that it's hard to pick one, you know? Uh Phoenix. Um Yeah, that's a good one. The reason I ask is that that manatee thing, when you told me about the manatee, that's just been stuck in my head. I think that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love manatees. Um yeah, I, I feel like I'd be some kind of multi dimensional animal that can traverse through different types of dimensions you know like what what i like about humans is that we can swim in the water but we can also live on the land but we can also be in the mm. air for fun. um you know huh. up in in space or whatever like i, I want to be thought of it like that that's brilliant yeah <laughs> that is multi-dimensional yeah hmm. yeah that's awesome so I, I don't know <laughs> i don't, I don't know yeah how to answer. I don't, I, guess think, I, just did. <laughs> I don't think I'd have a, a, a one to pick either like yeah no I just like animals more than most people if I'm being honest <laughs> yeah me too um so with that a spirit animal thing like are you more of a daytime or a nighttime person mm -hmm. well I'm not a morning person me That's neither. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> um unless it's early morning like you know 2 a.m but um i probably i love daytime because i love sunshine you know and i i love watching the sunset um but i and i do love the sun i love sunshine and light but i do like the night too the night has its beauty its own beauty to it yeah and i'm not afraid of the dark so oh really I, yeah. Sometimes I get a little weirded out if I'm like in a area I'm not real comfortable with. Yeah. I, the dark does kind of trip me out sometimes. I'm not going to lie. I used to be afraid of the dark. Um, I used to be afraid of shadows. Yes. Um, Afraid of things that I didn't know what they were. But I things have changed a lot for me. And now I feel like... Uh, I feel... Like I feel everything now, and it, okay. I can just sense what it is, you know, sort of. Okay. I'm not afraid of it because I kind of understand it now. I understand what shadows are. I understand. Yeah. The dark, what darkness is. I understand it. I guess. Yeah. You know, that's awesome. I mean, it's like I know we've talked about it. without dark, without darkness, there can't be no light. Like the light has to emerge from something. So. I like uh, the way you put it before that 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 light is birthed through darkness. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Um, so we were just talking about this before we started recording, but so if this is kind of a random question I just came up with, but sunlight versus moonlight, mm -hmm. do you do you like what? Do you feel a difference inside? Like. Do you know what I'm saying? Maybe because I'm a woman, and okay, the, the divine feminine is connected to the moon. 
y'all are more oh. connected to everything. Y'all are more connected. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel like I, you know, I, I used to like the moon. We were talking about this, how we used, I used to like the moon. I used to think the moon was amazing. And then I found out the sinister things that were going on on the moon. And then I started not liking the moon and looking up at it like, I, ooh, I wonder what weird thing is happening up there that I can't see right now. And, you know, yeah. being weirded out by it a little bit more. But then I started feeling like things have changed on the moon recently, which we yes. did this before. And yeah. I, I, I feel like the moon's energy has changed because of that. Um, it, because certain things have happened apparently on the moon re more recently that have changed it to a more positive um, bent, you know, like, so, and I'm feeling that now when I look at the moon, I'm feeling that, that sense of the landscape has changed. Yes. On the moon, there, there's no more man on the moon because there's been mining operations on the moon that has changed the landscape of the moon. That's why there, you don't see his face anymore. Right. Um, but also there's other things that have occurred on the moon that are setting things up for maybe think better things to happen here. And uh, whatever was on the moon, I'm not saying that there's not some bad things going on there now. Right. Probably similar to what's happening here. It's and like any Mars and on any planet right now, things are changing drastically right now. So there's transformations. Why why we're saying that there's a transition going on energetically because everything is changing Every, physically, energetically, spiritually, you know, mentally, everybody's progressing. It's a, it's a progression instead of a regression. We're yeah. progressing. The sine wave is going up now instead of down. So we're in the, right. we're part of the sine wave where it's where things are going uphill. So right. it's progressing. And so that that's changing the energy and the way things are starting to happen. That's awesome. And so I feel like that's the, when I look at the moon, I, I, I like it now and uh, I take pictures of it and feel it. Uh, and the sun, I love it. I've always loved the sun, but now that I know what it is, I, I love it even more. <laughs> now that I know that it's a portal and that it's, um, it's a way to, it's a way to, to travel. Um, yeah. Yeah. We didn't talk about that. That's huge. Oh, Can yeah. you explain a little bit? I mean, I, I don't personally know. I haven't experienced right. it myself right. and I'm just riffing on this really, but I feel like that's what I'm coming to the understanding, understanding, not everybody uses understanding, but yeah. you know, it's, but I am coming to a feeling of, yeah, things are, we're, we're getting to a point where we may be able to travel in, you know, through the sun into another, another existence somewhere else. Manly um, Paul talks about that, like to a T what you just said. Um, and he doesn't talk about, uh, entities that much or or uh, uh, aliens or anything I mean he's he's under he was under the impression that a lot of that came with from within and mm. that these things have potentially been here the whole time but like an just, angel gore, maybe yes yeah yeah the, mm. in my mind that's another word for universe universe egregore it's the same thing so when they talk about the multiverse we're just potentially living in someone like John D's egregore you know what I'm saying and we're learning how to get the hell out. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. Do you ever see the the movie being John Malkovich? Yes, that movie's incredible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where you're like stuck. They were stuck inside of his head. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm about to rewatch that, Linda. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> that movie's deep. Yeah. Um. But the. Uh, you know, they say that. Only, uh, I think it's hydrogen can escape a black hole. I think it was hydrogen. Well, what the hell is our reality made of? There's hydrogen in everything. And yeah. I've, I've heard stuff that the elements are just actually hydrogen spinning at different speeds. So, like, it's really all the same thing. It's just the spin is what changes it. And I think that maybe the moon and the sun play into that. Maybe maybe this trap isn't as much of a trap as we think it is. Yeah. I, I feel like it's a trap because 
we've been in it for so long and it's just like the, the proverbial, like the bird in the cage that doesn't know that it can get out even though the door is open. Right, like and, this cave, the allegory of the cave. Yeah, um, like the get out, but we're just realizing it now. Right, so if you were to look into your past, like when did you start going down this alternative information route? Like, was there an event that happened or did you just kind of slowly stumble into it? Both. Um, it, it was, I've always been, ever since I can remember, not, this, not, I never thought the same as my family or anyone else around me. Like, I just always been, just knew that I was different from everybody else that I knew. And, um, and it didn't have the same thoughts. I didn't have the same even then, even when I was being programmed, I still didn't, the program, the programming didn't always take, you know, okay. it would, it would, it would never completely sink in. I would always have these other thoughts that were like, mm, no, this, this doesn't seem right. This, it feels more like what I've always felt, you know? Okay. And, and uh, so I, but I would, I would not, I don't, I would only put it in to, to words like, in written word like I would write poems or I would write lyrics and I wouldn't say it out loud I wouldn't talk I never really talked a lot about what I was thinking or feeling I just always put it into some kind of a painting and either an image or a song because I didn't know how to put it into conversation or words so I just left it in some kind of other realm some other creative realm so maybe, um, maybe you've got some of that muse blood <laughs> in your dna <laughs> uh some i have some interesting blood in my dna i've discovered recently but so that was it so I, like eventually gradually um started really going down the rabbit holes all of them <laughs> um yeah. i'm gonna say maybe around 2010 uh, different people started appearing in my life that were questioning my belief system okay you know? And they were very good about it. They didn't, I felt like they were put into my life for that reason. And they, they did it in a way that made me start really thinking about it instead of immediately just rejecting it. So um, when I started thinking about what they were saying, I started realizing, opening my mind to those other thought, you know, realizing that there were other ways of thinking out there but not that I wasn't like I was always involved interested in other people's cultures and I had yeah. lots of friends in college that were from other parts of the world and I always loved other wanted to travel go to other parts of the world find out what those cultures were the kinds of yeah. shows I would watch on tv back when I used to watch them were always about other cultures and what it was like in other yeah. countries so I other races other people so I've always been fascinated with that anyway but um opening up my mind to what those other people, especially primitive tribes, I've always felt like they were closer to knowing stuff than we were. I always yeah. felt like they had it more together than we did as a culture. And um, so I uh, totally focused on that and started relating to those kinds of things and finding out what, what were their belief systems. And But they were still all belief systems. And it, so I started reading, I guess really started yeah. reading a lot of books, you know, Manly P. Hall was one of them. Um, just all these different kinds of esoteric books that um, the Emerald Tablets, you know, yeah. um, uh, they're all over there. I can see them from here, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> I have a whole library full of them. But, you know, the autobi autobiography of a yogi, you know, was very eye opening. Um, I, yeah, that's awesome. So there are so many different books that I started reading. Um, Charles Fort, um, I, I read that too. Uh, yeah, I mean, I could just name all of them, but I'm not going to. Anyway, it's just, there's so many books that I just started. I couldn't stop reading. I just was reading. I still do like read about five books at a time. Yeah, we yeah. talked about that. That's so, so funny. I, I can't. I just can't stop putting stuff in my mind. I keep wanting to read more. Then the papers that Dave gives us in the group, and you know, that's a totally different type of reading. It's yeah. more technical. There's terminology that I don't have to. I don't totally understand, so I have to look it up. And then that 
sends me in another direction. I know. So, you I know, that's thing. combining all of the, the, the different types of knowledge that's out there and yeah. putting it and feeding your your that into your your consciousness not even your brain but your consciousness your you just being aware of it i feel like and that in and of itself is helping your mind to expand not even even if you don't completely understand it or wrap your head around it yet the idea of putting it in there you know and letting it yeah. saturate and and ruminate and you know it's it's going to take root eventually and then when yeah. other things come up, you're gonna you, you're gonna make that connection because you've already got it in there. You can grab it from your mental library. Yeah, um, it's just right. like a different customs in other cultures, things they consider polite that you know yeah. we would. It's the same concept. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Um, where was I? Okay, so hold on, I can't read my handwriting. <laughs> Oh, okay. So if you were to pick any point in history, right, like in the past, say 200 years ago, their day-to-day -day life would not be, it'd be almost unrecognizable in a way, right? Like we're all on our phones. We depend on technology for so, so much. So right. having said that, how much stock do you put into modern technological trends or or any any really kind of modern trend it seems like you maybe have indirectly answered that you kind of cut your own path but if you could expand i mean like what the hell even just looking back a few years ago nobody has a regular ipod um you know things like that that are just seems so all-encompassing in our in our culture in our reality so where do you think we're headed? I feel like it's, have you ever read Brave New World by Aldous I Huxley? absolutely love Aldous Huxley, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, I don't know if that's where it's going to go, but that's that's a thought, you know, where there's going to be almost like two different separate paths that you can choose. But I think there's going to be multiple. I don't think it's just going to be two. I think it's going to be multiple. It's already get, becoming like that, where you can choose, depending on where you live, your proximity to things, yeah. what kind of lifestyle you want to have. And um, do you want to live in that, you know, whatever that, what, that wall that they're going to build where you can live inside the wall and everything's going to be within yeah. reach. You don't have to go anywhere outside the wall. You, I guess maybe a lot of people will want to do that, but that's, uh, you know, whatever they want to do. Maybe some people will want to live on a farm out in the middle of nowhere and raise their own, you know, animals and their own um, food, grow their own food and have a, have a little uh, community. And maybe some yeah. people will do that. And it's just a matter of where you, how, how you want to live your life. You know? I, yeah. Yeah. I like that. There's lots of factors at play in. Yeah. Like where, yeah. Where you're at, who you're around, uh, what yeah. you have access to. I don't think it has to be scary. Um, I think, there's always fear around things when when new things happen and things are going to change and lifestyles are going to change. Um, I I think it can be what what you want and I don't and I feel like everybody has their own desires and if you if you came into this life choosing what you what experience you wanted to have, right? So you I want to have the full on AI experience, right? If that's what I wanted. That's what you're you're gonna you're gonna go yeah. for. Right? If I came into this life and said I want to go for the whatever, like the more organic kind of lifestyle, then that's that's what you do. I feel yeah. like you, it's not gonna change. Like it's it, if you come back, if you decide to come back to Earth and have the Earth experience, yeah. you're gonna choose whatever package you want to choose and whatever experiences you want to go with that. So I like that. Yeah, I like that. That that makes me think about um, I think it was Dave Brandon when they interviewed Sean Cahill, and they were talking about uh, Helter Skelter, that Beatles song. Yeah. When I get to 
bottom, I go back to the top of the slide, right? and I stop and I turn and I go for a ride, and then I get to the bottom and I see you. I again. see you again, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think yeah. that's I think that's what it is, and we've we've all maybe just picked every path imaginable, right? And at a certain point, you go to the next level. Right. Um, but I think it's it's obviously more complicated than that. I mean, I think your heart has a lot to do with that. I think that some people who are um, stuck in this simulation, whatever you want to call it, they quit caring about other people a long time ago. Uh, and they're never going to move on. Unfortunately, you know, I'm not saying that negatively. I still got love for them. But some people just, they're stuck think- in the physical desires. Okay, right. Do you think it's because they, um, is it because they chose that or is it because they, they, they got hoodwinked into coming back? That's an incredible question. I don't know. Uh, I think maybe both. I mean, I think there's probably instances of both, but I think Oh, wow. I don't know, Linda. I got to spend some time with that one. I don't know. <laughs> I I wonder about that myself. And I, and I wonder how many people will be really truly stuck when at the end of their life, they no longer have to be trapped here because the, because, because that trap is gone. The soul trap. Yeah. I mean, it's from what I understand, you're no longer going to be hoodwinked when you leave, you will have right. the option to choose whether or not you want to come back or whether you want to have something else happen, go, go somewhere else. Yeah. Or do something else. Like so you have the those, winker. <laughs> I mean, I like to think that that's going to be a possible, a possible, you know, escape for some of these people that have been trapped for so long and are so despondent and in, in such a negative spot that maybe they'll be able to finally break free from it this point i would like do you have any loved ones in your life that maybe fit that profile like i think maybe we all have at least one or two i have some that i feel like they're they're living a good life but it's very three-dimensional and they they feel like they're happy because they don't know any other any other way or any different so right. I, i'm not i don't feel bad for them i feel like they're living what they what they chose to do when they came here and they're it's not a horrible life it's it's fine they're they're doing okay like family members and stuff like that but then there are other people that i know that are unhealthy physically unhealthy and they could be so so much healthier if they yeah. could break free from their mindset of you know, whatever their limitations are and what they feel their limitations are Um, or giving the power away to some other person or being. And if they could let go of that and see that they've got it within themselves to be able to heal themselves, that's really what I'd like to see happen. But That's huge. So that's like, you know, say you're out late, say if myself or yourself, we may have a gig or something and we may drive home at one in the morning don't stop at McDonald's. That's not real food. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. That's where I struggle personally is mm-hmm. like with little decisions like that. And now I'm not eating McDonald's anymore. Like, good, good. but, but <laughs> it's so much easier to take these fast food options or whatever, instead of taking that little bit more time or that little bit more money. And if you replace the word money with magic energy, yeah energy right right or time that's what it yeah. is yeah uh, i don't want to give my time to something that's literally killing me like this yeah. you know or like you know you hear all these crazy things about people being in the food and yeah. i don't know I you know, don't know. I, I, that that's interesting because i was at my daughter's house a few months ago and she was what in the background wasn't even listening to it but it was a, a Buffy and the Vampire episode. Yo, I loved that show back in the day. Yeah. Interesting that she worked at a, she was undercover working at a fast food place where they were accused of putting human meat in the food. 
Oh, and yeah. it was yeah. showing how it happens. Oh. And I was like, that's not a coincidence. <laughs> that was no. not a, a coincidental episode. They were wow. showing. I forgot about and that. And that was in the 90s. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so we've probably been eating humans for a long time. And then there was, um, uh, what's her name? I, she's married to John Legend. Oh, I know exactly um, what you're thinking and talking about. And I can't think of her name either. Chris, Chris, Christy, Chrissy something. I'm a big John Legend fan. Um, but she's uh, kind of freaky because she talks about eating humans. And she, like, she pretends what? that she's joking. She's like, oh, if, if somebody put uh, something in front of you and you knew there was, it was, you know, a human, would you eat it? I mean, what if it was really good? <laughs> And she was just like saying that to somebody, like, and it was just creepy. Like, I don't know. Yeah. She me out, man. <laughs> some of these, some of these, um, I'll put air quotes, elites. Yeah. Are into some truly horrible things. The, um, I don't know if I'm starting to suspect that some of these people. Sorry, I'm plugging my phone in. It's about to die. Um, are almost built into this simulation, whatever you want to call it, like. Like they're, uh, I don't know, because it's just hard for me to believe that a person can be born with like a non-local form of consciousness, like not from here, and can be talking about eating people and talking about, I don't know, like all these horrible war crimes. And like in my mind, these politicians aren't real people. They're not real people. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I think they are. I don't have the answer, but yeah, even if it's just like a a metaphor, they aren't real people. Yeah, no, I I, I feel like they're they're definitely uh, a hybrid of some some type, or they've been um uh you know there there's walk-ins now or whatever. Um, they've been uh, compromised, or they're a clone, or who knows. There's so many different yeah. truths out there of what what it is, you know. I, I feel like life is like game theory, you know. Yes. Oh my gosh, it's funny you say that. Yeah, that's huge. <laughs> life is just like game theory. <laughs> you know. It, <laughs> it is. I mean, it's like there are rules, kinda. Yeah. There are, but there are ways around it. It's like um, yeah, yeah. All these, there's, all there's these Easter eggs. <laughs> All these things we don't see that somehow can get a grasp on your mind and your uh, decisions you make, and it's not you, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I feel you on um, that. So, having said that, when you look back, how do you feel about some of the art that used to really influence you? Like, are there artists you maybe don't have a connection to that you used to? Yeah, I mean, art in terms of art, yeah, definitely. My my taste in art has changed um, to a lot more of a consciousness-based art, you know. Um, I've always loved psychedelic art, though, I have to yeah. say. I've yeah. always been into that and multidimensional art. And I've always felt it. Like, I feel art more than I see it. I see yeah. it as work, but I feel it like, uh, like I feel like if I look at a painting, if I feel like I can walk into that painting, then that is, there's something to it, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I found this dog in a, in a parking lot like a year oh, ago, and now my mom got another dog. <laughs> oh, he's adorable. Named her. her name's Hi. Nico. Go. Yeah, she's pretty cool. Um, I don't know. I feel like, uh, I don't know. I feel like art's just like we were talking about food just now. It's what you take in. Uh, it can really affect you. Um, yeah. if you listen to angry music all the time, guess what? You're probably gonna be angry. <laughs> <laughs> you go through stages. I feel like though, it, it, I feel like you listen to the music that you're feeling. In the moment, the music yeah. matches whatever 
you're going through. You know, like it, you, you'll listen to, you'll turn the radio or whatever, or you'll go on Spotify or listen to whatever you're feeling in the moment. You know, oh, I feel like this or I feel like that. Same thing with food. I feel like eating this or I feel like that. You know, because we have so many choices in this culture, it's it's crazy. But um, because we have so many choices, it's it's like we can let it match our mood or we can let it influence our mood. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I like that. That's big. <laughs> um, so if it's, I don't know, what's the, what's the difference? Like, can, can one be both? Yes. Yes. Yes, because you can choose to experience a certain type of music that you know is healthy for you. Like every once in a while, and not every once in a while, I try to, on the regular, listen to debuts or how Oh, season. yes. Or Chopin, you know, yeah. because I feel like they are so high frequency that it makes, it literally makes me feel a certain way. And, uh, yeah. If I want to start out my day in a really good way, just like if you want to start out your day, you're going to eat something that's good for you, you're going to take your vitamins. They're like my vitamins, you know? Yeah, yeah. So they're my energetic vitamins. So I do that. And then if I want to feel even better, I'll go for a walk in, this, in the sunshine and be around trees, you know, and try to look for some nice, beautiful flowers to sit, you know? So yeah. if I want to raise my frequency. That's what I do. If I want to feel good for a while, like really good yes. long time i do that and it can last me if i do all of that it can last me all day i can be on yeah. that all day because i started my day out that way that's um, awesome so but then if i want if i if i'm feeling a certain way or i want to feel like i want to connect more to the earth or i want to feel gr more grounded then i have to listen to something that's a little more base oriented yeah i can dig you that know? Or, or something with a lot of drums in it that are, you know, like, yeah, gonna make me feel something really rhythmic and, you know, make my, yeah. make me feel like my, I want to make my body. Move. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I like mean, that is more, and then the vibrations of the bass and the, and the drums and, and the feeling of that movement that you feel with it, it's more of your root chakra. And it's more of your, yeah connecting to the earth connecting to the ground and the vibrations coming from it yeah, yeah. i like so that you can choose like music how you want to connect to your energy space you know i'm sounding so, sounding like such a hippie <laughs> well, yeah but there's nothing wrong with that um it's just, <laughs> if you look at things objectively music's like anything else um it's and I'm, i love pop music i truly have yeah, that's I mean, that's my heart. But having said that, music's been dumbed down a lot. People used to listen to stuff like Debussy and all these symphonies. You know, that was their it exercised their brain and it exercised their emotions and it exercised their uh, an orchestra is nothing but an egregore. It's it's all these people like a cello player's music does not look the same as a percussionist music. You yeah. know, if you're a percussionist. But that triangle note is beyond important. It it is yeah. the new arrival of the new section of the music. So um I think I think some things have been lost. Yeah. Because I, I feel like in the in the class in the classical era, there were a lot there was a lot more of a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You had more of a, are you still there? I lost you. Hmm. Are you there? Yeah, I lost you for a minute. All right. I lost you for a minute. As That was weird. Um, <laughs> yeah, there was more of a, a range of of uh, highs and lows. Yeah. And more depth in that kind of music. Yeah. And yeah. more dimension. There was a lot more dimension to it. Where, yes. And so now there's, I don't know. I'm I'm not gonna say all music is like that, but a lot of it has lost its kind of soul, you know. 
there's no depth. It's all depth disposable. And soul. Yeah. Because you can listen to you can listen to like old blues music. You can listen to old uh you know, like uh muddy waters or something, you know. Yeah. And you it's so simple. You know, BB just a guitar and a and a voice. And yeah. that's all it's just bare bones, but it's so you feel it. Like you feel it's it powerful. Yes. Yeah. It's, just you you connect with it and it's just so amazing like it it's it's deep and heavy you know and real yeah and, raw. and i i for like that sure. too yeah catch me for my next breakup whenever that'll happen listening <laughs> to one what is it one bourbon one whiskey one, one scotch, bourbon one beer one, yeah catch me George listening Thurman. to that with teary eyes George yeah uh just any of that like um yeah. there but yeah it's like the flip side of that so the orchestra thing but it can also be beautiful uh, i don't know art is something else art is something else it's hard to explain i uh, i just recently with music uh made a had this connection in my i was walking to work in the morning and all of a sudden got struck with this idea of the fact that we're all like notes every single human being is Ooh. is a note yeah. each one of us and we're all we all carry our own frequency and we all yeah. have our own pitch and uh but we can <laughs> change that at any time because we vibrate at different frequencies during the day all the time from moment to moment you know you can change your pitch like and frequency depending on what you decide to think about or feel in the moment yeah so uh, and then there's some people that tend to vibrate at the, the lower frequencies, but we need those people. There's nothing wrong yeah, with that. You know, right. it, like you'll look at somebody and they'll be like a, like a drunk laying on the street, you know, and you'll, and you're like, why are they here? Well, they're here because they're the base note and we need that base note. Yes. That's and huge. Yeah. I've never thought of it. That like... base note. <laughs> you know, don't get rid of no. all the base notes. What, what would we do? No. You know, and there's some beautiful, saw... like, creature, and she's gorgeous walking down the street. She's blonde, and she's got these gorgeous, sparkling blue eyes and this great figure and beautiful smile. And she looks at you, and she smiles right at you. And, and you're like, oh, my God, she just made my heart skip a beat, you know? Yeah. She's like the really yeah. top high note, that like that, oh, you know, the opera singer's whole Right. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah, face. but she needs all that. You need all that. Yeah, that's yeah, beautiful. Linda. Yeah. So that's what I was looking at when I was walking to work. I was seeing all these people and realizing what note they were. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. And it was all part I'm of the song that. of the day. It was like a song. I'm like, I'm walking in a song right now. This I'm in a living song. <laughs> this is awesome. Well, all these creation <laughs> stories talk about our reality being birthed through spoken word, right? Like yeah for frequency there's something, yeah. to, that. There's something yeah. to that yes it's it's a beautiful realization when you can when you can have it hit you like that it's an amazing yeah. feeling yeah it's, it's like, like we're, we're living in we're living in all all different types of dimensions all the time like yeah you know simultaneously yeah. our whole life yeah, is that sure. and sometimes we get to That's see it, it <laughs> yeah yeah i like that dang it linda my phone's at one percent can we oh, can yeah. we uh do a part two for this <laughs> yes. can we do a part two yes All we right, can cool. well this is part two we're, right. we're gonna we're gonna do a part three because three is a three is a magical number <laughs> i like that yeah yeah spirituality huh <laughs> yes so we'll All do right. a part three and thanks for being on part two and uh we, we will talk again soon <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, I'll talk to you soon. For now. Right, bye. 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 <laughs>